What's up? What's up, what's up? ¿Cómo están, banda? Bienvenidos a una sesión más de Café y Artes Marciales. Salud, salud, salud. Cheers. El día de hoy vamos a estar transmitiendo en español, but we'll also be transmitting in English, okay? So, uh, if you're watching from uh, the U.S. or any uh, English-speaking countries, yes, we're going to do the translation, okay? Entonces, vamos a estar hablando en español y en inglés. Tenemos un excelente invitado el día de hoy, pero antes de eso, traigo y le damos la bienvenida a mi co-conductor, el tremendísimo Sensei Axel Cárdenas Lizama. ¡Balsa! ¿Cómo estás, Frank? Aquí estamos hoy día con un gran invitado. Excelente, excelente. Sí, señor. Tenemos con nosotros a nada más ni nada menos que al gran máster John Mack desde Cebu, Filipinas, desde el, um, el estudio central o el dojo central de la Cacoy Cañete 12 Pares Familia. Ok, tremendo invitado eh, con una gran trayectoria. Él es décimo grado en el sistema de Cacoy Cañete 12 Pares. Eh, tiene... Eh, estuvo entrenando eh, y fue el, uh, el sparring del, del, del finado maestro, grande maestro Cacoy Cañete durante los últimos 20 años de la vida del Grand Master, del, del Senior Grand Master o el Supreme Grand Master. Eh, y eh, él tiene entrenando ahí, de hecho nos acompaña desde el cuartel general eh, y tiene entrenando ahí desde 1900, de principios de los noventas, ¿ok? Entonces tiene muchos años en el arte filipino de escrima y tiene mucho que compartir. Sin más, eh, obviamente el maestro habla eh, solamente inglés, ¿sí? Entonces nos va a estar hablando en inglés y yo voy a estar traduciendo. Pero sin más ni más, uh, let's give welcome to uh, Grandmaster John Mack. He is uh, the head instructor uh, and a 10 degree black belt in the Kakoi Cañete Dose Pata system. Uh, he has been uh, in the art for almost 30 years and he uh, was the uh, the Uke, the sparring partner for the late Supreme Grandmaster Kakoi Cañete, the founder of uh, the Cañete Dose Pata uh, Screamer art uh, for the past or the last 20 years in the life of the Supreme Grandmaster. So he is a VIP, uh, uh, maestro, instructor that is going to be here with us. And so let's bring him in. Let's say welcome to Grandmaster John Mack. Hello, Thank sir. You. Thank you, uh, Master Frank. And uh, good morning to everyone, to all the followers of the uh, Marshalls and Coffee. Thank you, very much. Uh, thank you, Master Frank. Thank you. We are really here. It's an honor. Thank you. We are really excited and honored to have you here. Muchas gracias. Estamos muy honrados de tenerlo por aquí. Thank you, Master John Mack. Excelente. So, um, sir, we usually start uh, the, the conversation uh, with uh, asking the, the, the guest that if he can share, if you can share with us can you see me? Okay, I'm frozen. Master, your, your, your image is freezing. Yeah, I can tell. Maven, maven. Um, me, no. Si quiero congelar la imagen. Freeze will be master. Pero puedo, pero podemos oír, lo puedo oír. Ok, so, there we go, I think it's coming back. So, sir, could you share with us a little bit of your background, please? Ok, uh, I'm Grandmaster John Mack of Acapo y Cañete de Jose Pares, uh, with the 10th degree black belt of the system. Uh, I got promoted, uh, Last 2016, uh, before uh, the late Supreme Grand Master Kakoy Kanyete uh, passed away. So I do Filipino martial arts, uh, only the system of uh, Kakoy Kanyete Dose Paris. Uh, it's only pure uh, screamer. And uh, 
I do karate when I was uh, six years old, but uh, I really fascinated and like the uh, system of the uh, stick fighting, which is krima, and I really like the style of uh, Kakwe Kanyete dos Pares. And uh, I also competed in a, a sports skrima, so we have uh, competitions for uh, skrima in the Kakwe Kanyete. And uh, I've been to Los Angeles, uh, California in 1996, which I got my uh, first world title, uh, title during the fourth, uh, Week up, uh, fourth week of uh, World Championship. Ok, And, ok. Uh, yes, thank you. Bien, el maestro nos comparte que él entrena solamente Escrima, que en el año 2015, antes de que falleciera su maestro, él fue promovido al grado que tiene actual, que es el décimo grado. Eh, también eh, nos comenta que cuando estaba pequeño, a los seis años de edad, entrenó un poco de karate, pero desde principios de los 90 se está entrenando eh, el escrima y de hecho eh, una vez le tocó ir a competir a Los Ángeles, por allá de los 90 también, eh, porque le gusta también la parte deportiva, la competencia del arte de escrima. Um, thank you, sir. I'm just going to be translating what you say, if that's okay with you. So, yes, it's fine. So, so you started um, the art, uh, training the art directly with the grandmaster. Le pregunto si él empezó a estudiar el arte directamente con con el gran maestro, with the supreme grandmaster. Sorry. Yes, uh, I started in uh, 1982, but uh, I got introduced by uh, my uh, ex-husband of my sister. Uh, He's a German, he's also a practitioner, and he introduced me to the Kakwe uh, Kanyete Dusi Paris because I uh, raised up and uh, grew up in Mindanao. Then okay. uh, I moved to Cebu to look for this uh, uh, scream uh, headquarters at the Kakwe Dusi Paris. And when did you move? To Cebu, the Kakwe uh, Kanyete, when uh, that is in the 1992, yes. In 1992. Ok. Ok, entonces nos platica que primero él, a él lo introdujeron al arte su excuñado, eh, que lo, lo, le, le empezó a hablar del arte, él vivía en Vintanao. y en el año de 1992 se muda a la ciudad de Cebu para entrenar. Eh, escrima con eh, en, en el cuartel general de la Cacoy Cañete, Cacoy Cañete perdón, 12 pares Great eh, How is How was the experience of training with such a uh, a famous and uh, such an expert uh, martial artist as the late uh, Supreme Grandmaster Cacoy uh, It's a great privilege. It has a very nice feelings uh, because I I only heard him about the stories because uh, he is teaching criminology here in Cebu uh, with the two universities, and in Mindanao, Mindanao is a like a battleground for the soldiers. So most of the uh, soldiers uh, came to Cebu for uh, study in the criminology. So they always witnessed the fight and the real battle of uh, Eskima with the late Supreme Grand Master Kakor Kanyeti at that time. When they get back to Mindanao, they talk about uh, about him. So I could hear from these soldiers talking about uh, Kakor Kanyeti. So he's uh, really famous. So in my mind, I just would I would like to meet the, uh, the this name Kakor Kanyeti. I would like to meet the man. I would I would like to learn. And I, I got the uh, opportunity to uh, come in Cebu and learn uh, directly from him. And uh, yes, it's a, an honor and a, a very great, a big privilege that uh, at last, I, uh, the like a, a dream comes true that I meet the man. And uh, yes, he's uh, he's uh, very humble and but the uh, his way of uh, 
teaching is always like a warrior. Is so uh, he has always the fighting spirit in about uh, teaching and uh, and uh, giving ideas about the uh, techniques on his uh, styles. Okay. Uh, le pregunto que si cómo fue entrenar con el uh, Supreme Grandmaster Kakoy Cañete eh, y comenta que él, como decíamos, viene de Vintanao. Entonces, eh, Vintanao es como un campo de entrenamiento para los soldados y esos soldados van y aprenden criminología eh, a Cebú, toman cursos y cuando están ahí en la universidad y esto tomando cursos y demás, eh, eh, el, el finado maestro Cacoy Cañete les daba clases eh, y muchos soldados aprendían con él y entonces el eh, Cacoy Cañete pues era una leyenda, digamos, era una leyenda viviente en ese momento eh, y los soldados regresaban a Vintanao y contaban todas estas historias del Grand Master, entonces eh, nos comenta John que él escuchaba todo esto y que tenía esta, no, el sueño de conocer a esta personalidad, a conocer a este no, hombre notable y cuando pudo se fue a Cebú y pudo entrenar con él entonces fue un honor y un privilegio poder conocer a, ¿no? a esta persona, a, este, a su ídolo, pues, y poder entrenar con él. Y dice que se hizo un, era un sueño que se hizo realidad y que entrenar, el señor era muy humilde, pero era un verdadero guerrero que tenía el espíritu del guerrero y eso era lo que él compartía en sus clases. Ok, great. Um, I hope I'm saying everything right. So <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a nice story, you know, interesting story. Um, so, uh, you started as what's, what's the rank system? Do you have color belts like in the, in the Japanese art or, uh, you go, you know, you start with color verse up to black belt and then do you have dance or rank? What's the ranking system in the Kakoi Cañete Dose Pares Screamo? We adapt the uh, belt system, like we have a uh, white belt, green belt, brown belt, and the uh, black belt. From the black belt, we have a uh, first grade black belt, and until to uh, 12 grade black belt. And the uh, highest is uh, only the late uh, Supreme Grand Master Sheyako Kakoi Kanyeti, that is the 12 black belt. But uh, at the headquarters, it's a little bit uh, informal because, like, you have only to go there and train. We don't think about uh, the uh, testing. We just uh, uh, come and train. And the, the program is a little bit different because it's more in fighting. We, they teach you... Uh, basics but uh, the basic is you don't have to master the basic you you jump straight to the fighting <laughs> sparring okay then uh, after five years after six years uh, then you just receive some certificates but uh, now we try to change it we change it into uh, yes we the uh, program more uh, at least the students could teach after uh, he's uh, finishing okay. the course. Uh, yes, before uh, we don't have that, it's just more for fighting. Okay, uh, let me translate that, please. Okay, le pregunto al maestro que si eh, tienen algún sistema de grados, que si cómo es la, la enseñanza en su sistema. Y me dice que, que en realidad eh, el, el trabajo ahí en su, en su cuartel general es digamos, un poco informal, dice, o sea, vas y entrenas. Tú lo que, lo que vas a hacer, entrenar, entrenar, entrenar. Pero si sí tienen cintas, adaptaron un sistema, tienen primero la cinta blanca, luego la verde, luego la café y luego la negra. Y de ahí se van de negra primer grado hasta doceavo grado, que es el grado exclusivo del finado master o supreme grand master Siriaco Cacoy Cañete. Eh, de ahí tienen grados hacia abajo, ¿no? Este, entonces, el máximo grado que puede tener un Grand Master, pues es onceavo grado. Eh, como decíamos, el Grand Master John Mack tiene décimo grado. 
Entonces nos comenta que llegan a entrenar, um, la manera en que se ha venido haciendo, ellos llegaban a entrenar al cuartel general, de esta manera, digamos, eh, no tan, tan estructurada, pues entrenaban y más que nada era pelear, 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 pelear. Sí les dan básicos, sí, pero no se esperan a que dominen el básico. O sea, le, les están enseñando los básicos, pero les están poniendo a pelear, a pelear, a pelear. Y después de cinco o seis años les daban los certificados o los certificaban en el sistema. Pero comenta que ahora ellos están cambiando esto y que están estructurando un sistema para poder permitir que los instructores que se gradúen de ahí eh, puedan enseñar un sistema de manera estructurada. Great. Uh, OK, so now you're generating a structure because of uh, the fact that you're, you guys are having, I mean, uh, a lot of success promoting the art, right? So you have students all over the world and you want to be yes. able to have a structure. Is that, is that right? Yes, uh, mostly uh, from the well, Western side, like from the USA, Europe, they are more structured. So they have like uh, properly uh, following some programs like the white belt program, uh, brown belt program, like that. So okay. it's more uh, structured than uh, uh, it happens sometimes that the they come to headquarters and uh, sometimes we admit that the, they are uh, in a higher rank. For example, you are in a brown belt program. You're already a brown belt. And against this guy from headquarters has no rank. But this guy has no rank, been practicing for eight years or 10 years, but still got no rank. Okay. So you okay. could see that uh, this guy uh, practicing for five years, no rank, uh, has a much better skills than uh, brown belt. Gotcha. Okay. So It's that's the uh, time that uh, we have to change this. Uh, at least uh, we can uh, identify our uh, instructors in the future. So we can uh, give them a uh, uh, opportunity to teach and uh, how do you call that uh, responsibilities. Okay. Um, nos comenta el maestro que eh, los países, por ejemplo, que sí, si, yo le pregunto acerca de la estructura del sistema, que si lo están ajustando porque están teniendo mucho éxito a nivel mundial. Y me dice que en países como en, en la parte oeste del mundo, digamos, en países como en Estados Unidos o en Europa, en, en la Unión Europea, eh, ellos están más estructurados. Los maestros de la Cacoy Cañete de Doce Pares tienen programas para cinturón blanco, para cinturón verde, para cinturón café. Pero entonces lo que pasa es que cuando algunos de estos alumnos van al cuartel general, y pelean con los alumnos del cuartel general que no tienen grado, ¿sí? llega un cinturón café, por ejemplo, de Europa o de Estados Unidos, y llega y pelea con algún alumno que no tiene grado en la escuela central, pero que tiene 9, 10 años entrenando sin grado, y entonces el del cuartel general que no tiene grado le, le gana fácilmente a veces ¿no? a un cinturón café, pero es porque tiene muchos años entrenando. ¿no? Entonces dice que ahora se ven con la necesidad de estructurar para que no pasen estas cosas y no hacer sentir mal al que ya tiene el cinturón, pues, ¿no? Entonces, eh, están estructurando para que, digamos, poder, eh, se puede estandarizar esto. Ok, let me, let me say some comments y luego vamos a tener preguntas del sensei Axel. Ok, eh, eh, Richard Matthews saying respect from Jersey. Saludos. Hello, Richard Matthews. Thank you for watching. Rafael Herrera. Un gran saludo. Big salute, uh, uh, Grand Masters. Uh, he's Thank from you, Spain. Rafael. Thank yeah. you. Gracias, Rafael. Vagelis Drossos from Greece. Hello, Master Frank Soto. Hello, hello. Okay. Hey. Uh, Jim P. Javelin. Hello, Mr. Frank. Hi, Grandmaster John Mack. Great to hear you. Saludos. Thank you, man. Thank Hello, you. Jim. Thank you for watching. Sam Lee, desde Chile, from Chile. Saludos, maestros. Tremendo invitado. Greetings, maestros. A great guest. Gracias, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Sam Lee. 
John Ward, Ward, Master. Hello, my friends. Greeting from Ireland. Saludos. Hello, Master Hello. Ward. David Rivera says, Salamat po. What does that yes, mean? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, amazing. Salamat po. Yes, thank you. Gra, Master Jerry Arrechea. Nice. Says, Hey, Grandmaster John John, great to see you, brother. Saludos. Saludos. Uh, thank um, you, uh, JM Jerry Arrechea, for uh, watching. Yeah, Jerry is going to be here in uh, Coffee and Martial Arts next week on Wednesday as well. So, Wednesday. Um, yeah. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, Francisco Gonzalez, saludos a los maestros. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you, Francisco. Javelin Captain Guro, Master Guro. Hello, Chief Instructor, Grandmaster John Mack, and hello, Master Frank Soto. Hello, Master Guro. Hello, Guro, Kurt Hablin. Yeah, Kurt was here, I think it was like three weeks ago, and we're going to try to invite him further in the future, yes, so he can share his experience in Espanol as well to the Spanish uh, people, the Latinos. Okay. Uh, Terrell Camara said, good to see you on, Grandmaster John. Hello, Terrell. <laughs> hey, Antonio Fonseca. Good morning, teachers. A question for Teacher John. How pure has the art of Doce Pares been kept? As a 10 degree, have you implemented any change in the system or in the way it's taught? Buena pregunta. Le preguntan que si qué tan puro es el arte de 12 pares que si se ha mantenido así o que él como décimo grado si ha implementado algún cambio al sistema de cómo se enseña. It's a thank you for that question. It is quite interesting questions really. Yes. Uh, the Kakoy community uh, style we have the we will say it's inner core. The inner core is the, uh, we call it freestyle drills. We call it a controlled sparring. So some, they, they interpret that in a, like a, a conditioned uh, freestyle drills. So we keep that one, that is our goal. It's more um, near and close to the uh, practical uh, screma situations because you can deliver your strikes, you can deliver your uh, uh, techniques uh, with not following any patterns or any, any uh, preset drills, but it's uh, just a combination. You can express yourself whatever you want. So we keep that one. In a way, how do we, uh, uh, the way do we teach that? Because I am the, they always call me for teaching, so I have to research on my own. So I have to gather my my information. So around the world, we have different uh, programs. So we are not yet uh, doing the same uh, standard, standardized uh, program at, from the headquarters. Uh, they have their own program, uh, also taken from the uh, teaching of the late Supreme Grand Master Kakwe Kanyete. Then I use uh, my own uh, program for, uh, because I have to research, because I am the one who teaching. Then uh, yes, I keep it as, as, uh, as, as long as I can keep it, I will uh, uh, make it uh, pure. But of course, I have to understand the principles by the, uh, doing the principles, by understanding the principles. You can add on to the program, but uh, still uh, following the same principles on it. Thank okay, you. okay, okay. Uh, let me translate that, por favor, please. Uh, okay, Le, entonces la pregunta es qué tan puro ha mantenido el sistema y contesta que eh, ellos mantienen el, look, el núcleo interno, ¿sí? Tienen... Eh, 
hacen drills o ejercicios de freestyle o de estilo libre y tienen una cosa que le llaman pelea controlada, ¿sí? o sparring controlado, digamos. ¿okay? Y es lo que los mantiene o hace que el arte sea lo más práctico y lo más cercano a la realidad. ¿okay? Entonces, eh, eh, esto lo hacen sin patrones, lo que le permite al alumno expresarse eh, o expresar ¿no? eh, cómo se mueve. Eh, pero dice que eh, comenta que él tiene siempre que estar investigando como maestro, porque él aparte es el que está encargado ahí el, del, del mayor grado o de los mayores grados ahí en el, en el cuartel general. Y nos comenta otra vez que hay diferentes programas en el mundo. Como decía, que no está todavía todo estandarizado. Entonces, eh, todos estos programas que hay desde los diferentes másters y gran másters en el mundo se basan en las enseñanzas de, de, del, del finado Supreme Grand Master Kakoy Cañete, y, pero eh, dice que él usa de hecho su propio programa lo más puro posible, o sea, lo más cercano a las enseñanzas de su maestro, sobre todo buscando entender los principios, o sea, se basan en los mismos principios, pero van ajustando los programas, digamos, dependiendo porque no está todavía todo estandarizado. Ok. Thank you, sir. Axel, ¿tienes alguna pregunta, mi estimado? Yes. Um, amazing story. Thank you. Uh, Master, Master um, share with us where is the origin of Kakoi Cañete style screaming? Where is the origin, the origin of uh, Kakoi Sorry. Cañete uh, Scrima? ¿Dónde es el origen del sistema? So the origin is uh, he's the youngest founder when the uh, Ducey Paris founded in 1932. 19? And, uh, 1932. 32. Okay. Yes, he's the uh, youngest founder, so he's the youngest member at that time. Then, uh, because he is the Ducey Paris defender, so he's the one who uh, accepting all the challenge against uh, uh, people who rebel clubs uh, challenge Ducey Paris. So he always a researcher and he wants to be uh, 10 years ahead of the style. So he make his own style and uh, develop his uh, fighting system. Uh, and that comes from his uh, uh, Wego Todo experience in Eskrima. So he changed everything, every uh, techniques and uh, strategies. And he is also, uh, a guerrilla fighter during the World War. So all the knowledge and uh, information he used in the uh, Eskrima. So he developed his own style, which is uh, really very effective and uh, becomes uh, more logical when it comes to Eskrima. And I think uh, he developed the Eskrima ahead of the other styles for about 25 years. So that's the uh, style of Kakoi uh, Kanyeti. Thank you. OK. Uh, nos explica eh, el gran master que eh, el maestro Kakoi es, eh, era, perdón, el finado Supreme Grand Master Kakoi era el fundador del sistema 12 pares más joven. ¿sí? Entonces, que por ser el, el, el más joven, él tenía que aceptar todos los retos. Él era el que se peleaba con las otras escuelas de esgrima cuando iban y los retaban, porque es lo que se usa o usaba allá ¿no? en esos momentos. Por lo tanto, él eh, empezó a investigar mucho para poder estar adelantado, menciona, cuando menos 10 años adelante de los demás sistemas. ¿no? Eh, es lo que nos menciona el Gran Master y por lo tanto desarrolló su propio sistema para poder ganar y tener esta ventaja. Además, aplicó él lo que hizo es que cambió todas las técnicas y todas las tácticas, las revolucionó todas eh, con sus investigaciones y además el hecho de que él es, fue de los guerrilleros ¿sí? de Filipinas que pelearon la, en la Segunda Guerra Mundial, ¿no? en, en la parte de, de la guerrilla filipina, ¿sí? entonces tenían tácticas de, de guerra de guerrillas ¿sí? eh, que fueron también muy efectivas, o sea, digamos que probó su arte en la guerra, pues, eh, entonces dice que lo que logró fue un arte mucho más lógico, 
más práctico, más efectivo, que piensa él o dice él que está adelantado 25 años al menos sobre los demás sistemas de, de, de su región, de su país, ¿sí? Ok. Um, Axel. Estás... Eh, ahora Continúa sí. con el comentario nomás, por favor, maestro. Ya. Eh, Luis Zamora says, Greetings, my dear uh, maestros. It's good to maintain the uh, martial energy in movement. Everything is energy. Chi. Saludos, Samo. Saludos, mi estimado. Hello, Luis Zamora. Good morning. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Danny Arnold says, let's see if I can say this right. Magandang Umaga Saillo Cuya. Yeah. Yes, Was that correct. correct? Yes. Ah, what yes. does that mean, sir? <laughs> Good morning to you, uh, elder brother. Cuya is like an elder brother. Nice. He says, I'm a Kempoist and I love our niece. I hope to come back to the Philippines to learn eventually. I was in Tandag City in the Christmas of 2018 and I want to come to Cebu next. Amazing. Thank you. Yes, Tandag is uh, in Luzon, so in another island. Okay, sir. If somebody wants to uh, contact you and go and visit you and take lessons from you in Cebu, what would they have to do? Uh, they can uh, contact direct to the uh, Takoy Kanyiti Lucy Paris uh, headquarters. So I think we have the website. And they can also uh, uh, send me emails through my uh, email John Mack at uh, 10jm at gmail.com. And we have also, I have my uh, website, jmjanmack.com. So they can uh, connect me on that. And also, of course, here on my uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook page. And uh, you can, they can also write me on the my Facebook Messenger. Okay, let's see if we can share your Facebook page right now. It should be up there. It is. That's the Facebook yes. page right there. You can follow me on my YouTube <laughs> on my on my YouTube channel. Okay, the YouTube channel. It's right there. Yes, you just type John John Mac and it will appear. Okay, and I think we also have the website. That's a very nice website, sir. Thank you. It's ongoing. So I, I will be teaching their e-learning. So they can uh, start with the white belt program until to the black belt. But at the moment, it's still ongoing. Very nice, though. And you also mentioned the Kakoy Cañete Doce Pares. Is that the website? The, yes, the headquarters? The yes. Okay, so that's the headquarters website as well. Nice. Okay. Okay, uh, Patricio Cifra says, greetings from Chile. Thank you, Grandmaster. Thank you, Hanchi. Thank you, Master Patricio. Gracias, Maestro. Gracias, um, Maestro Patricio Cifra. Okay, so, Axel, algo, hiciste yes. la pregunta. Um, it's very interesting a name. Dos pares. Uh, very interesting for me for um, I speak Spanish. Um, Dos pares is Spanish. It's Twelve pair. Uh, tell me more. Why? Pregunta yes. que si por qué el nombre Dos pares que es muy interesante que si nos puede hablar más al respecto. Please, sir. Yes. So Dos pares because uh, also we knew the. Uh, Spanish uh, numbering system, counting, because of our history. Uh, Dosi, yes, you are correct, uh, it's a 12. Paris is a pair, uh, 12 pairs. Uh, Dosi, 12 attacks, and uh, Paris is the uh, pair, is the defense technique. So 12 attacks pair with uh, 12, 12 defense techniques. So that's why it's called Dosi Paris. Okay. Nos contesta el gran master que 
Eh, 12 pares, sí, en efecto, es por, por el nombre. Recordemos que Filipinas estuvo bajo la ocupación española, entonces ellos todavía utilizan a veces el, uh, el sistema numérico español, el conteo. Entonces, eh, 12 pares porque dice que son 12 ataques básicos y tienen 12 defensas. Y de ahí el emparejamiento, digamos. Thank you, sir. Axel, ¿algo más? Eh, sí. Eh, what advice would you give um, the new um, practicante? Master, please help me. Okay. So he wants to know what's your advice for the new practitioners. ¿Cuál es su consejo para los nuevos practicantes? Uh, my advice, uh, sorry. Yeah, like, what would you say to the new practitioner, right? What would what would be your your, you know, guidance? What would you tell them? So my advice, uh, first, as a beginner, when you start doing, for example, iskrima, the Filipino martial arts, you have to really understand. Uh, deeper what are you doing what and uh, what are you practicing because the iskrima is a very broad scope uh, a lot of ideas a lot of uh, information different styles too many styles so much better to begin and uh, understand on any other style no matter what style it is but you have to really understand uh, the movements what what is the goal and what is the uh, future for example uh, outcome of your uh, of your uh, ideas and uh, you you dream to become like what so understand so no matter what style it, it is but uh, just love the art because it's a lifetime study and uh, it's also very good for your Well, mind and body. Thank you. Ok. Thank you. Ok, entonces nos contesta eh, el gran máster que él, primero que nada, le diría al, 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 al principiante que cuando inicie con el programa que se enfoque en el entendimiento, entender cómo es la práctica, qué es lo que tiene que hacer, ¿sí? entender los movimientos, para qué son estos movimientos, ¿Sí? y entender o tener claro hacia dónde va, ¿sí? cuál es eh, tu enfoque, tus sueños, ¿sí? qué es lo que tú quieres, qué deseas obtener del arte. Y también dice que es importante amar el arte, ¿sí? porque esto es un estudio de por vida que le hace mucho bien al cuerpo y a la mente. Thank you, sir. Good, good, good answer. My okay. Perdón, Axel, ¿algo vas a decir? Adelante. No, maestro, continúe con los comentarios, por favor. Ok, good. Buenas preguntas, mi estimado. José Antonio Fonseca Ayala, great show, very interesting. Master John, are Filipinos martial arts united? How is your relationship with other instructors? Oh, thank you for that question, José Antonio Fonseca Ayala. Uh, We don't have any, uh, how do you say that? We are all friends. We have a gathering in Cebu and uh, from even from Manila, we have a gathering of uh, Filipino martial artists. Yeah, all the masters, grand masters, uh, they come and join together. Uh, we respect uh, each one of them. And uh, yes, there's, there's, uh, the relationship is, uh, is very good. And uh, we admire them. We admire the, uh, their effort for teaching Filipino martial arts and propagation for the Filipino martial arts. Uh, we, we admire them for that. Thank you. Okay. Eh, la pregunta es de José Antonio Fonseca. Dice, si están un, pregunta si están unidas las artes filipinas, las artes marciales, y cómo es su relación con otros instructores. Dice que que no tienen problemas con otros instructores, al contrario, son amigos, 
y que de hecho hacen una reunión, hacen reuniones eh, periódicamente, tanto en Cebú como en Manila, ¿sí? eh, se juntan maestros, hacen gatherings, ¿no? se reúnen y tienen una muy buena relación y que ellos admiran el esfuerzo de los demás maestros por enseñar el arte filipino y compartirlo con todos. Entonces, que respetan y admiran mucho eso. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have more, uh, more comments, more, uh, let's see. Ryu Shinkai Doyo Mario Gutierrez said, saludos desde Chiapas, México. Saludos. Okay. Saludos al Mario, gracias. Rubén Darío Aguilar, very interesting. I'm training Escrima in Jaén, Spain. A big salute. Thank you, Rubén Darío Aguilar. Maravilloso, Rubén. Muchas gracias. Saludos a la Gran España. Okay. Danny Arnold says, I just came from the post office and pick up my solid IP wood sticks. How appropriate that they arrive just as I'm viewing this podcast. Salud. Ah, amazing. <laughs> okay. Eh, nos comparte que acaba de llegar de la, de la oficina postal y que recogió sus, sus sticks de madera IP eh, que, so, que, que apropiado que le llegaron el día de hoy cuando está viendo este podcast, gracias thank you Dan, Danny Arnold, thank you sir ok Axel, thank algo you, más que quieres preguntar um, yes uh, is possible um, replace uh, sticks uh, for tonight uh, we're using those um the same um principles principles what other principles for for a uh, blade okay he he's asking is if it's possible i don't know if you got the the question is it possible to uh translate or change the sticks for knives or blades a type of blade and apply the same principles or do you need to apply different principles for that yes uh you can use blades there's only a little bit changes of the striking because the blades is uh you have to use the edge part So when it comes to blade, it, you have to use the edge part by cutting and you by stabbing. In a uh, screma, in the stick, you can use the uh, uh, four sides. So like, for example, uh, I have here, just for an illustrations, I, I have here a stick, right? So, so this is the stick. If I'm holding this part, this is the knuckles, If you're holding a blade, this is the blade, the sharp part. Okay. Cuando right. agarre esa parte, dice, esta es la parte de los nudillos, pero si es un filo, esa es la parte del filo. But if this part is like a back of the hand, so in the stick, I can use this part to deliver a strike. Okay. Esta... Front of the hand. Ahí tenemos la parte de atrás de la mano y la parte de enfrente de la mano, y con el stick la puedo usar para golpear. I can use also this part uh, on the thumb, on the thumb side. También puedo usar la parte del lado del pulgar. Which you cannot use that in blades, because in blades, for uh, practicality, for uh, practical use of that, you have to use the edge, the sharp. Y eso no se puede usar en los filos, en las navajas, porque por cuestiones prácticas solamente usas la parte que corta, obviamente. So that's the uh, slight changes when the uh, using the blade. Esos son algunos de los pequeños cambios que se hacen cuando se usan los filos, que fue la pregunta que hizo el, el buen sensei. Son entonces otros principios. Eh, que los principios no cambian, sí, para ello voy. Eh, dice, eh, no, es, no cambia el principio, pero tiene ajustes. Y los ajustes tienen que ver con que con el, el, el stick tú puedes golpear con los cuatro lados y con el filo solamente, con la navaja o la espada o la daga, solamente el lado del filo es el que se usaría por cuestiones prácticas. 
Okay, so great. Okay, this is uh, quite interesting. So uh, when when you have uh, a new student coming in, sir, you mentioned that that um, uh, you have your own program, right? That you created your program based on the principles taught to you by the Supreme Grand Master. Uh, and uh, um, that you teach from that. So do you take beginners? Do you teach beginners, sir? Yes. Uh, I teach beginners. Uh, they must start from the very beginning to understand the uh, uh, principle and they must understand the progressions so they have to start uh, from the very start yeah i teach uh, beginners okay le pregunto si enseña él a principiantes con su propio programa dice que sí y que inician con principios y aprendiendo los cuadrantes do you um, um, do you begin with the same program for every beginner or are you always adapting your teachings to the individual me as a because I have a certain goal for my students like I want him to be uh, he can demonstrate and can perform uh, these actions in the future so I always begin in in our stream uh, me I always teach him breakfast okay so that is uh, that, that's uh, me uh, if he cannot do brick force, then I brick force. I start with the uh, linear striking and some uh, wrist exercise exercises because uh, the close uh, close range kako uh, style is a close range. It's more on the wrist movements, so strengthening the wrist and uh, make the wrist more uh, flexible. That is for the accordbing strikes. Okay. Uh Le pregunto entonces si cuando él le enseña a los principiantes si tiene una manera estandarizada para todos o si lo va individualizando y me comenta que él, el Gran Master, lo primero que, les, que él tiene muy clara las ciertas metas que deben de tener los alumnos, como poder demostrar su, sus habilidades, ¿sí? Entonces, eh, dice que lo primero que les enseña son las caídas, cómo romper la caída. Les enseña a caer prácticamente. Y también les enseña, eh, les hace movimientos de flexibilidad de muñecas, ¿sí? Para fortalecerlas y hacerlas más flexibles, porque comenta que el sistema de, de 12 pares de ellos es uh, un sistema de contacto cerrado, digamos, o sea, de distancia corta. Entonces usan mucho el muñequeo, ¿sí? Y las caídas. Por eso el enfoque que él da. Eh, dice, pero que es algo muy personal de él, que es esto, enseñar primero, para después poder hacer los movimientos lineales y, circular, y circulares con el stick. Eh, Axel, ¿algo vas a decir, mi estimado? Te veo inquieto. Uh, master, you, you grade is, is maximum grade, is, is the top. What is the new challenge? Uh. Okay, le pregunta al maestro, le dice, tienes un grado hasta de, lo, de los máximos, ¿cuál es el siguiente reto? Yeah, can you uh, translate it for me, sir, again? Okay, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's saying that uh, you are one of the top rank, so your rank is already at the top, right? Uh, as a 10 degree, you're already up in the ladder, so being the top uh, grandmaster that you are what is what are your next challenges do you have uh, you know challenges that you wanna or goals that you want to achieve the uh, challenge yes uh, as a top uh, ranking of a kakoi can you tell paris in the our system we have applications for example the, as what we have called uh, controlled sparring. The controlled sparring is like uh, 
as also uh, other uh, people uh, they they translate that in a condition uh, freestyle drills so in controlled sparring it's like uh, fighting each other almost fighting each other then my challenge for me is to execute the techniques that i have learned because in the control sparring the techniques is impossible to execute is is really difficult to execute the techniques so you have to execute and apply the techniques from from the very, very uh, from the very start and how many techniques can you execute in control sparring how how many techniques that you can uh, apply so that is the challenge that's why it's a lifetime study because each techniques uh, each techniques cannot be uh, applied in one year in two years it's it's difficult because your opponent is resisting is fighting against you again uh, he's uh, fighting back so you cannot just uh, easily apply the techniques it's different from drills one will stay and deliver the strike and you perform your techniques it's different it's like almost fighting okay so to get the perfect timing to get the uh, sit up and the application the proper appropriate uh, application of the techniques is this the uh, challenging it takes okay. time thank you thank you sir eh, la pregunta es él ya es un, un décimo grado un gran máster en el sistema ya está hasta arriba del, del de la escala entonces cuáles son sus retos ¿no? eh, eh, en el sistema con ese grado que tiene entonces nos contesta que como ya había mencionado en la aplicación en su sistema hay lo que le llaman control sparring sparring que es la pelea controlada sí eh, que es eh, lo más cercano que tienen a la realidad, ¿no? Entonces, eh, no es como un drill donde la otra persona te ayuda y te estás moviendo. Aquí tienes un compañero que se resiste, ¿sí? Que no te deja, que quiere lo mismo que tú, ¿sí? Que te quiere ganar, pues. Entonces, eh, el reto para él es aplicar las técnicas de los drills y en el sparring eh, control, porque eso es muy difícil, dice, no es algo fácil, es algo que lleva el estudio de ahí, que es un estudio de por vida, porque dice, aplicar una técnica te puede llevar a lo mejor un año o dos años en aplicar una sola técnica, y entonces eh, su reto es poder aplicar todas las técnicas que ya tiene, como gran máster, poderlas aplicar de esta manera. Ok, muy bien. Um, let's see. I think we have another comment here. Uh, says, oops, I think there's a delay in my live stream. I'm behind the conversation, I think. Uh, I hope you get it right, sir. We're still here. And no worries. Everything stays uh, in the in the page. Whether uh, On YouTube, you will be able to see the, the podcast later on. It will stay there. Okay. Um, Well, uh, we're running out of time, sir. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, this has been very, very interesting. I, I, we really appreciate and we are very honored to have you here. Okay. So, um, Axel, ¿tienes alguna otra pregunta? No? ¿Qué opinas sobre la eh, artes de uso de armas del Cobudo Okiwanense? ¿Qué opinas de otras artes que ocupan ar implementos, armas? Ok. What is your opinion, sir, about other arts, other weapon arts, like Kobudo from Okinawa, for example, or, or any other art that use weapons? What's your opinion about them? Yeah, it's a very nice art, actually. And the, uh, all martial arts, they have different... Uh, It's very interesting, and uh, people could uh, choose uh, what kind of martial arts he wants. So with uh, other martial arts, uh, just love your martial arts. Just love the way, what it, uh, what uh, is it, and uh, how it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Entonces dice, dice el maestro que eh, en realidad son muy buenas y muy bonitas y que todas las artes marciales del manejo con armas son muy interesantes y, y tú puedes escoger cuál es el arte marcial que te gusta, ¿no? que tú quieres. Lo que dice es nada más que ames tu arte marcial, eh, lo que es y lo que enseña. ¿no? Thank you, sir. Uh, very nice. Okay. Tengo una pregunta más para poder cerrar el máster, si me la permite. Seguro. La pregunta que hago a todos los in invitados. Gracias. Un joven que desea aprender artes marciales y se interesa por el escrima, eh, ¿qué le diría? O sea, él, ese joven desea saber qué, encuent qué encontraría en ese, en ese arte si decide tomarlo. Ok, so this uh, leads us to the question. There's a question that Sensei Axel always asks to all of our guests, which is, if you have a young man coming into your dojo or your studio or your headquarters and ask you to teach him, uh, and he asks, what, what is it that makes the Screamer your art unique and what am I going to get? What would you say? What it's are the, a, the benefits? Yes, it's a unique because it's our culture. It's part of our uh, life as a Filipino. It's part of our culture. We use this martial arts to defend our country. And also it helps for your uh, mindset, your uh, It's good for the body, for conditioning, and also the most uh, unique is, is very rare art. And uh, yes, it's a very rare art. It's our uh, national uh, sports as well. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Eh, el maestro contesta contesta que eh, lo que lo hace único a, a, a su arte es que es parte de su cultura, de, de la vida del filipino. Eh, además, usaron, dice, usamos este arte, dice, para defender nuestro país. Dice, además de que este arte ayuda a tu mente, ¿sí? tu, tu estado mental, tu mindset, y también condiciona tu cuerpo. Y es un arte muy raro, dice, es un arte raro, diferente, único, eh, y es además nuestro deporte nacional. Uh, thank you, sir. Ok, so... Um, new comments. Yep, we have new comments. Tyrell says, great answer, Grandmaster John, about the benefits of the art. Thank you, Tyrell. <laughs> ok, nice, yes. Danny Arnold says... Uh, Filipino martial arts will cause people's uh, other martial arts to truly blossom and unfold. An Okinawan karateka will really learn his true karate in the uh, Filipino martial arts or Japanese arts or Kempo, etc. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, we are, uh, we are out of time. Is there anything else you want to add? Is there any comment you want to share? Okay, uh, thank you everyone for following us and thank you uh, Guru Axel Cardenas uh, for assisting and uh, thank you uh, Master uh, Frank Soto for this uh, opportunity and for the viewers if you would like to learn I'm uh, having a Dos Armas uh, uh, listen program so it's uh, about two sticks yes this is a Dos Armas, Dos Armas virtual uh, Zoom class season two so we'll start this uh, March 20 and we'll end up on the uh, May 23rd Uh, this uh, uh, year. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. You can see the, the information right there on the screen. Okay. Take advantage of this um, and learn from Grandmaster John Mack. Okay. He is an amazing, amazing martial artist. Okay. Uh, he travels and teaches uh, all over the place. Um, let's see, we have, uh, he's, uh, you know, he teaches beginners, he teaches advanced students, he will teach anybody that wants to learn his culture, that wants to learn 
his unique and rare art, the art that they use to defend their country, okay, which is also a national sport. So they're very uh, uh, proud, right? To uh, to and they love their art, like he already says. So if you can uh, take advantage of this, I really suggest that you do so. You know, I have to say that I met the late uh, Supreme Grand Master uh, Siriaco Cacoy Cañete back in 2003 when he gave a seminar in Mexico City, one of many, through uh, Guru Angel Postigo, uh, which is a good friend. And uh, it was an honor. And I hope to meet you, sir, in the future, Grand Master. I will be honored, you know, yes, to, uh, to meet you and, and learn from you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate that you were here in the podcast. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, thank you for sharing, Axel. Thank you. It's an honor and share with the broadcast with you, Master Grandmaster John. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you for everyone. Okay. Greetings from Lanzarote, uh, Kempo Karate. And Mr. Hadfield, fantastic information. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Grandmaster, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for doing this. I know it's three o'clock in the morning now there in Cebu. Yes. So thank you, really, really thank you very much for taking this time, this extra time for us. Uh, we wish you the best and uh, more success with your uh, course right that remember is. take advantage of this uh learn from the man he knows what he's doing uh he's a passionate uh and a great instructor so thank you again sir and uh you You're enjoy welcome. thank you thank you axel muchisimas gracias thank you everybody for watching um take care Danny Arnold says, Senior uh, Supreme Grandmaster Kakoi was a war hero, I had heard. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you all. Take care and have a great day. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have, okay, let me just share that fast. Tomorrow we're going to have my good friend Jeff Kolaski, who's going to be here in coffee and martial arts. Can't miss that. Thank you. And on Friday, we're going to go again with the. Uh, 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 purpose of the etiquettes of the Japanese culture um, and um, rituals. Okay, with Axel. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Axel. Thank you, Grandmaster. Yuma.